I'm Jen from the North Coast Local Land Services and we're one of the many service providers that offer landholders, land managers and leaseholders information on how to manage their property, big or small. All landholders, whether large, small, hobby, commercial or lifestyle, need to protect their waterways by improving the condition of riverbanks with vegetation, protecting, restoring and regenerating native vegetation on farms and rural properties, creating a buffer zone between agricultural and animal activities and the waterways flowing through our catchment. Selecting the appropriate restoration option for your patch is essential. Looking at things like existing vegetation, weed mass, erosion, slope and accessibility will help you decide which restoration technique is best for you. In this video, we'll meet both a small and large landholder and learn about their journeys working around their creeks. Helen and I bought the property about 20 years ago, um, but for the vast bulk of that time, we were living in the city and only visiting periodically. Um, we've been here now permanently for two years. When we started, we knew nothing about rainforest and regeneration. We were city folk, but we were keen to learn and that's what we've been progressively doing. 40 acres uh, was a daunting prospect and we knew we couldn't tackle it all so we picked some priorities. We cleaned up some of the mess left by a previous owner, we planted some trees next to the property line with our neighbour and we picked this waterhole area here that was really important to us because we'd swim in it often but the area around it was a mess. There were weeds and bare rocks and rough dirt we cleaned it up and then we planted the big clumps of lamandra that you could see. Um, that wasn't the end of the job. When we returned, we had to weed, we had to progressively work on it, keep cleaning it up. But after a while, it looked after itself and that's what it does now, allowing us to go and work in another spot. They were just small steps, but they proved to us that we could really make a difference because now, those little trees we planted are big trees, they're providing cover for other plantings. Um, this waterhole now essentially looks after itself and we can move on to other areas. So we picked priorities for our work. That was important because we only had limited time. We picked the areas we looked at every day, where there were camphor laurels and other weeds. Uh, we wanted that improved, we tackled that, we removed the, the camphors, we cut them down. Uh, we got rid of the weeds, we cleaned that up. It's hugely rewarding and reinforcing to deal with the areas you look at all the time and to see the benefit. We could see a big, ugly forest of privet on the edge of the most beautiful part of the property, the rainforest. I cut down that privet. Uh, it was hard work for a little while, but it was really worth it because that area was a native tree seed bank. In that case, all we had to do was provide the space for the native bush to come back and to keep on top of it. I knew nothing about that. Our neighbour told us, our neighbour helped us with that, advised us. It was the most beautiful part of the property and it was really important work and we can see the benefit now where the natives are coming back. We always knew we wanted to improve the property, but we knew absolutely nothing about how to do it. At the beginning, all you need to start is a desire to do it, just to want to do it and there's nothing you need to do that someone else hasn't done before. You make mistakes, you learn from mistakes, you do some things the wrong way, some things work, some things don't. Some trees survive, some trees don't, some get washed away, some you lose, you realise the next time how you've got to do it differently. Progress is not a straight line, it's a, it's a learning thing where you take a step forward, a step back, two steps forward. So you progressively sort of learn it. There are people out there who can tell you and can help you. There are resources and organisations and books. And we progressively found that information. We asked questions, people told us. We didn't know what Lamandra was, we didn't know what it did. But someone told us about it, we planted it, we saw the benefit. Every time that happens, you realise you can make a difference and you're not on your own trying to deal with 40 acres. You can take it piece by piece, bit by bit. Now I came to the realisation that after working in an office for almost my whole life, there was probably nothing that I've ever done that would be as enduring, as lasting, as beneficial, and at the same time, as rewarding on a personal level as the work we're doing here. My name's Ben. We're here in Tintonborough on our property that we call Forest Farm. It's about 270 acres. 
and, uh, and it's a property that we manage for conservation. We've been here for about five years on the property and we bought it purely for a lifestyle choice and for conservation. We had a pretty small understanding or a vague understanding of conservation when we moved here. It was something that we wanted to learn a lot about and, and it was a pretty steep learning curve when we first came here but it's, it's been exciting to learn it and, and it's a part of the journey to learn all about conservation. So I did a Diploma of Conservation and Land Management uh, through Tokel College, um, which is the TAFE organisation. So I studied online and did all of my subjects based on, on this property here. Being involved in the industry, I, I heard a bit about the opportunities through local land services in particular. And so we started with a project with local land services here, here on the property. And then the more we got to know various people, the more we got involved, we heard more about funding opportunities and grants that were available. So we were able to continue the the riparian work. We started on the riparian areas um, for, for a couple of reasons. It, the, the riparian areas were heavily degraded. We had cattle accessing the creek on, on the whole property. Um, and also there was funding and, and opportunities available for us to, to tackle the riparian projects. This is the, the MEMS project with, that we've got with local land services in collaboration with local land services and, and a contractor to work here on the site. Um, it covers about a kilometre, I think, of, of Emigrant Creek, they're about, or 900 metres. And, uh, and it's, it's a project that we're pretty proud of and excited about and, and it's made a big difference to our, our riparian zone here on the property. Uh, so the cattle were causing significant erosion um, along, along most of our stretch of Emigrant Creek. They had unrestricted access, so they were accessing the water. Um, they were eroding the banks quite significantly and, and causing erosion points in, in the creek, so every flood those erosion points would generally, we'd lose a whole bunch of soil from those particular erosion points. Um, so keeping the cows away from the creek was, was a really important part of the, the project. We also have a wetland area that's, uh, that's very close to our riparian zone and it also had unrestricted cattle access. So um, in, a, in another part of the project we actually put a fence around that. Um, and to watch the wetland area return from heavily degraded to a, to a thriving um, native dominated ecosystem has been really exciting for us to watch. The species list that we chose was done in consultation with the contractor and it was based on some of the things that they suggested and also some of the species that we knew were growing here on the property. There was also a lot of uh, lamandra and carrack species that went in particularly for um, sediment control into the creek and then obviously there were some big trees that went into the creek bank as well just for soil stabilisation. So we didn't have to do any real work to the wetland area, we did a little bit of woody weed control and exotic grass control um, but it did all of its natural regeneration itself. Tree species and species selection has been really good to watch. It's helped us um, gauge how we've done some of our other riparian plantings here on the property. And just the, the way that the project was carried out with the contractors here and we've learnt a lot about um, dealing with those particular projects. We started out dealing with a, a representative from local land services and, and it actually happened relatively quick. It was in a couple of months. We, we actually had a contractor here on ground starting the work. It's been probably 12 or 18 months since then um, and it's been a constant, a constant project but it, it actually rolled out relatively quickly. We were, we were very happy with how quickly it happened. The initial treatment was about a week about a week's worth of work for, for the contractor and so they did all the stem injecting and the, and the planting prep and then the planting was probably about another week's worth of work I think and then every two or three months they come back and do some follow-up maintenance on the planting as well. Seeing vegetation be restored on the creek bank to what was just degraded exotic grasses on, on, the, on the riparian zone, seeing vegetation re-establish, seeing trees re-establish, uh, seeing birds return and, and other animals return to, to the areas where previously we weren't seeing anything. Um, we get a lot of satisfaction out of walking through these regeneration areas and, and seeing all that stuff happen. We're very proud to be part of this project, the MEMS project with local land services. It covers about 900 metres or a kilometre of Emigrant Creek frontage on our property. And, uh, and we're very proud of, of the results and seeing the birds and the animals return to the riparian zone in areas where it was just dominated by exotic grasses in the past. Seeing soil remain intact on our riparian strip that used to wash away in the floods, all of that stuff makes us feel very happy to be involved in, in this project. So we've learnt that it's, uh, it's a good idea to bite off small chunks at any one time, do little bits, uh, that helps with that sense of not getting too overwhelmed as well. Um, we're trying to tackle a, a very large project in one go on, on your own. The other thing that we've learned is it's very valuable to tap into local networks and people who are also involved in this kind of stuff. 
um, lots of people will help you and, and sort of point you in the right direction when you, when you need some help and some guidance. No matter how your property identifies, if you have a question on your waterway or creek line, our staff can provide advice and information on erosion control, weed control techniques and restoration practices. Remember, Local Land Service is here to support all hobby, conservation, commercial and lifestyle properties access the information and advice they need to manage their land, as every bit counts. If you'd like more information, you can visit the Local Land Service's website.